Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to be here to share with you how can we started to choose the best options in treating the naive patient. I have four areas to share with you. Let's first take a look at the landscape of AIDS treatment in China. Then I will share with you two cases to let you the importance of initial treatment. First of all, let's now take a look at the newly reported numbers and the accumulated reported numbers of AIDS in China. So by the end of 2022, there were already 1.22 million people living with HIV. In 2022, we also have 100,000 newly reported cases. In other words, we have a very clear upward trend on yearly basis. The highest number reported per year is more than 150,000. In other words, today we're going to talk about the more than 100,000 newly reported cases to choose the best option for treatment. Just now, I was talking about the option for the naive patient. I think the reason is because it's related to the ever updating of our national antiviral treatment guidance and policies. In 2003, China started to implement comprehensive free antiviral treatment. In 2017, and many of the eight drugs were included into the medical insurance. So in other words, the uh, treatment has been shifted from uh, providing free of the charge service with uh, the self-funded options and medical insurance being covered. Moreover, we have antiviral treatment programs, including single template preparations, bath, tough, and uh, doTERRA and 3TC has already been included into the medical insurance in China. Those are some of the policy changes we saw for the past few years. Well, at the same time, antiviral treatment in China follow two guidelines. The first one is the National Free Antiviral Treatment Manual, starting from the first edition to the now fifth edition in 2023. The other one is China AIDS Diagnosis and Treatment Guideline, which has already been edited as the first ed fifth edition in 2021. Besides that, why should we here talking about the treatment of the initial antiviral regimen for the newly diagnosed cases? Because China is already in line with international communities. We already have a 10 free of charge drugs being available for the patient. Besides that, we also have eight and nine medicines included into medical insurance. Besides that, we also have some self-paid medications if the patient are happy to use them. So you can see these are the free antiviral program. The first one is a still PDF, AZP, plus the NVF or EFV. Well, for the second line treatment, we also have the DTG. So besides LPV, we also started to have a DTG that has been um, providing more flexibilities to the patient. Let's also take a look at the recommendations in China AIDS diagnosis and treatment guidelines. Besides the free of charge antiviral treatment, for example, the traditional uh, TDF plus 3TC, and we also have a TAF plus FTC plus peak and uh, um, DOR, CTC, and the TDF. And we also have a TTG plus 3TC or DTG plus 3TC as a combined therapy. And we also have some other alternatives. And if the patient is uh, untolerable to certain drugs. So this is indeed the antiviral treatment we have in China. So according to the existing treatment landscape in China, no matter for the free of charge treatment or the guidelines being recommended by the Chinese AIDS diagnosis and treatment regulation. Let's also take a look at uh, the testing capacity of China. Any of the drugs fails with the toxicity. So the first thing that we need to take a look at the routine test items, for example, liver and kidney functions, where the patient have a hepatitis B and hepatitis C. 100% of the patient could be tested, and the result will be available in seven days. The second one is CD4 cells. So around 99% of the patient can receive CD4 cell test before treatment, and result will also be available in seven days. And we also test the viral load. Around 43% of the patient who receive viral load testing before treatment, 4% of them receive the result in seven days. But uh, the um, drug resistance test cannot yet be done in some local hospitals. Needless to see the result. So in other words, viral loading and also drug resistant detection or testing capacity is not sufficient, which will also limit the options of antiviral treatment. So that's the reason we need 
more antiviral treatment programs being conducted in China that can indeed work with the existing testing capacity in China. Okay, uh, let me just show you two cases. The first case, um, Mr. Lee, 31 years old, was being diagnosed in 2021 March, who started antiviral therapy, who actually chose the free of charge treatment, TDF plus 3TC plus PGFV. The patient's viral load has been elevated. The patient is also sensitive to the treatment. So according to such a viral treatment, we didn't change the regimen. The patient continued with the initial treatment. But three months after the treatment, the patient's viral load reached 85,000. No significant change in CD4 cells. Because of the viral load is not decreasing, but increased, we gave him the drug-resistant test. The result shows the patient is sensitive to proteins. The interface is also sensitive. The patient has the drug resistant to non side drugs. And the patient is only sensitive to xydal voting. The second case, Mr. Zhang, 59 years old, who's been hospitalized in December 2016. At that time, his viral load is 1.58 million. The baseline drug resistance only show one mutation, V1790, is non-nucleoside potential drug resistance. We go for the patient for the free charge treatment, including um, the patient after the treatment, whose viral load has been decreased from more than 1 million to 5,500. At that time, my hospital can provide a drug resistance test. Even if the patient drug resistant test has been performed, even if the viral load has been decreased, but you find out the patient is highly resistant to non nucleoside drugs. Protease inhibitors are sensitive. The patients are almost showing resistance to almost all kinds of the nucleoside drugs. So that's the reason we only choose the patient to go for integrase inhibitor and the protease inhibitor. But till now, the patient's viral load is undetectable, and the CD4 is also quite stable. So both cases can actually show us some of the reviews we need to consider. What are the factors influence the success of the initial treatment? First of all, we need to truly understand whether there is any pretreatment transmissible resistance. Does the pretreatment resistant testing truly reflect the presence of the transmissible resistance? What would be the drug resistance before treatment? The second one, for if a variant based non nucleoside drugs, is there any limitation for its use? Thirdly, as China, we have already in line with the international community in providing different options. So, what are the advantages of the integrase inhibitor based arrangements in the initial treatment and the rapid startup? So, those are some of the factors including barriers to resistance, efficacy to the antiviral drug, a patient compliance and the long tail effect of the drug, as well as the impact of the treat pretreatment resistance. As we can clearly say, this is a requirement of the pharmacological for compliance. For example, if the patient is not compliant enough, it is just like a monotherapy, because half-life of the non-nucleoside drugs is significantly longer than TDF and FTC. The half-life of the current integrase inhibitor and protease inhibitor is almost the same as that of the tenofovirus and lamivudine and HTC. Therefore, there is a low requirement for compliance tolerance. So what are the differences between TDR and PDR? As I have already showed with you, transmissible drug resistance refers to the infection of the transmission of the drug resistant strains or the individual who have already uh, restrict, uh, resistant without antiviral treatment. Generally speaking, the drug resistant strains might be replaced uh, by the uh, sensitive strains. So the drug resistant detection before treatment cannot truly reflect the existence of the transmission. Pre-treatment drug resistance detection, including the transmissible drug resistance or the restart of the antiviral treatment after previous treatment. And this is actually the meta-analysis just been published in China in 2023. You can see the overall drug resistance rate in China has increased significantly before treatment. From 2020 to 2022, the drug resistant rate before treatment is already 7.8%, with drug resistant rate of non nucleoside infrarism reached 6.3%, so a significant increase being identified. There's some regional difference. In Shanghai, the number is 70%, Guangxi, 6%, 10% to Chongqing, 7.8% to my center. So 
what are the limitations of the EFV scheme? First of all, um, its incidence of adverse event is very high, 99.6%. Those increase include 95% of the nerve system AE, 79% of the abnormal blood repeat, 48% of the impaired liver function. After being treated for one year, its discontinued rate is more than 6% because of the AE for effluvian, and um, the AE is also related to the treatment compliance. The more AE you have, the worse the compliance would be. The compliance is also proportionally related to the success of the treatment. The better the compliance is, the better the treatment would be. If you have a low compliance, the treatment result would be quite bad. So how about the compliance of HIV-infected people in China in long term? This is a meta-analysis in China, which included more than 11,000 patients. Compliance in week 1, 81%, 89% in first month, but in third month, it's only 68.3%. This is the compliance data in China. Let's see other limitations. This is also another study from China. Depending on the level of the viral load, the viral suppression rate has been significantly different. The highest viral suppression is for viral load less than uh, 100,000. And uh, this is for viral load more than 500,000. In other words, high viral loads are associated with delayed virological suppression and non nucleic enrichment and significantly increase the risks of the virological failure. Therefore, the Chinese Medical Association guide has already mentioned if the patient's viral load is more than 500,000, it's better not to use UFV. But let's also take a look at the advantages of the integrase inhibitor compared with the non nucleic acid treatment. You'll find out it has very good uh, selectivities, high resistant barrier, and low cross resistant rate. It's already be the best first line treatment. Why should it be? And let me just label it right here. So that we can see that uh, for I have highlighted in here that which means for the drug toxicity is relatively low. And secondly, let's look at for the potency. In this study, we can see more than a like two log drop in the viral load with seven to 14 days of monotherapy. This demonstrated for the intense antiviral activity of the integrase inhibitor. And when we look at uh, for our national program of this initial treatment, free medication or still our preferred option, this find shows how that for the free medications accounts for more than 40% of those initial treatment options. Therefore, our choice of initial treatment options still leaves much to be desired. And why is that? This is a change in this initial regimen recommendations of the international antiviral treatment guidelines prior to 2012. For more of uh, this, like a uh, EFV based regimen, were like recommended, and between 2012 and 2018, we can see that the recommendations were were for like first generation of those like uh, integrase uh, inhibitor, including for this like a uh, retegravir and also uh, for this like. Uh, our Viravir. After 2021, for recommendations are more for second generation of the integrase inhibitor based regimen. For the initial treatment regimen recommended in not only for the US, European, but also for the but even for the like WHO guidelines are like uh, integrase inhibitor based regimen. This is actually what we have showed to you. This includes for those American AIDS Society, the US Department of Health, for the European AIDS Society, and for these British agencies, among others. And almost all of these guidelines recommended either a single tablet integrase inhibitor based regimen or a combination of regimens. Only for the European guidelines still retain for it's like a Dorovary based regimen. That's the change we have seen in international guidelines. So this is for a short summary of today's presentation. Currently, antiviral therapy in China has made great progress, but patients still have unmet needs, such as for the presence of like pre-treatment resistance, for the presence of a uh, high for the spiral loads, for the presence of like uh, EFV adverse events, and for lack of testing capacity, and this limits for choice of initial treatment regimen with uh, like free drugs. Secondly, for the current Chinese antiviral therapy drugs, as I said before, have been brought into line with international standards, and there are alternative drugs uh, to the patients. So for this like initial treatment regimen should also be brought into the line with those international standards and for those advantages of for this like integrate should be like fully uh, fully utilized. Thank you very much. This is all from me.